Hello, this is Denton Yoder, instructor for BSC 2304, the Biological Systems Engineering K class. Uh, today's section is on surveying. Uh, this is going to be kind of an introductory to it. The first thing I want to point out is that your Lab 11 assignment is up online. It is uh, importing the survey field book and making a drawing out of it, which means putting a D size border on it. Uh, zooming it to scale, uh, labeling it and everything. Probably going to turn it 90 degrees to get it to fit better. Um, we're going to be talking about the survey command language. And so online I put in a survey text file which has all the commands that we will have access to. We're only going to use, um, I don't know, about eight or ten of them at the tops. Um, the main ones we're going to use in the point creation, we're going to use the ADVA. Uh, in the example survey field book we're going to import, they're going to use an F1VA, which is really the same thing. Uh, it's a horizontal angle, distance, vertical angle. Uh, but in class, I'm going to suggest we use the ADVA. You can use the F1 if you want to, though. I don't, I don't care. I think the AD makes more sense. Okay. Um, the beginning of the field book file, if we pull it up in a text editor, has some uh, setup information. Uh, the job number, what the units are in, and the rest are all defaults. Um, uh, no offset to the uh, data measuring device, scale factor one, horizontal angles to the right, vertical angles, zenith, those are all default, defaults. We probably do want to include the line units, meters, degrees, minutes, seconds, or unit feet, degrees, minutes, seconds, in our jobs, just so the system knows what units we're talking about. Uh, in the sample file we're going to import, there are basically five lines of setup. Um, and here they put six, but one of them is redundant. Okay, what they did is they located an NEZ for point number one, the northing, the easting, the elevation, the description. NEZ for point number two. Now these are listed in your survey text file, the NEZ command, that is putting in a point in the drawing by its coordinates. Um, then they set up a survey instrument. STN is uh, setting up a station. Station, point, instrument height, description. They do a station one, which means put the instrument on station one. 1.8 meters for the height of the instrument, and put a description on it. Down below, they have a prism set to 1.567. One of the tricks I do in my class is I like to ignore the height of instrument by zeroing the prism against the instrument. I'll show you how to do that in class today but we set the prism beside the instrument and set it to the exact same height as the, as the instrument, so then that will negate the height of the instrument on the instrument and the prism height. We can leave them both zeros if you match them, and you have to do that every time you do a setup if you want to do that. If not, you can record those answers, that's fine. Okay, the next one they do is an azimuth from 1 to 2, telling it it's 91 degrees, which is going to make this vertical on the screen. That's redundant because we already have point 0.1 and point 0.2. If you want to do that, you could remove, you could remove comment out point 0.2 because it really doesn't need it. A uh, point 0.1 and an azimuth to point two is enough to for a setup. If you have point one and point two, then you don't need the azimuth. So I think that's kind of redundant. Um, but 
I guess it really doesn't matter if they want to be redundant. Okay. So we've set up the instrument on point one. We are telling it to backsight point two. That's this BS point orientation. Backsight point. Backsight point two. The orientation would be if you're a number of degrees off of point two. Um, which you, that's optional. Um, okay. So we're sitting on point one, we're back sighting point two. We are going to get the prism height in. And once again, if you match your prism to your gun, you can leave that about zero. Okay. Now, what the print job is, is a whole bunch of, they've got them as F1 VAs. I would personally prefer uh, AD VAs. Uh, AD helps me remember that it's angle distance, AD. VA is vertical angle. Angle distance, vertical angle. Uh, AD VA, a point number, what the horizontal angle is, what the slope distance is, and what the zenith or vertical angle is, and then a description. Your gun will give you all this information when you set it up. So, to recap setup, you need a starting location, you need a backsight azimuth or point, you need to set up the gun, do the back sight, set your prism height, and you're ready to shoot points. So here they're shooting point 20. Horizontal angle is 87. This is labeled in degrees, degrees, period, minutes, minutes, seconds, seconds, and tenths of seconds. I know that because at the top of the file, the units were set up to degrees, minutes, seconds. Degrees, minutes, seconds is normal for a computer uh, for doing the survey. Uh, the first two places after the period are going to be taken as minutes and not decimal degrees. You'll never see a number above 59 because 60 would be another degree. Same thing with after the next two digits, that will be seconds. Once again, you'll never see anything above 59 because that would be a full minute. So these will range from angle zero to angle uh, 359.59.59. One more second and you're at zero degrees. Okay. 360 would be zero. Okay. Now, at the end of each line, in quotes, you have the description. Technically, if there's no spaces in the name, you don't need the quotes. But they're putting them in here just to be consistent, I think. And since some of theirs have spaces, they need quotes. If you want to, you can make the computer draw automatically. What they're doing is, before they shoot this EW point, they're doing a begin EW. If we look in our survey command language, that would be a figure tool, a figure command. And there are a whole slew of commands that you can use to draw with. So if I do a begin and a figure name, it'll start drawing. Every point I hit will connect the dot. Then I can do things like end to stop a figure uh, or break a figure. And then if I want to pick back up again, I can continue the figure. Those are the main commands. Technically, I can do a close offset or close building, and it'll make rectangular figures for me. Um, I can tell it to turn an angle distance. Uh, I can, 
tell it to go in azimuth or a bearing or to a northing and easting. There's a bunch of stuff. If I look in my sample file, I have begins, ends, and, and continues. And that's it. I'm going to call that extremely normal. That's usually about as much as we can get the surveyor to put in the file. Uh, so what we're looking at is a survey language. They call it a field book file because of the name FBK. Now, what we're going to do with this survey file is we're going to import it into CAD. In the CAD package, the tool space, along with prospector and sector and settings, also has a survey section. If you don't have survey, you need to turn it on. It's right next to the toolbox, survey. The survey section has functions that aren't in the regular prospector. What it does actually is an external database for your point setup. And this is going to have a, what they call an observation database, which means what are the angles that were read out in the field? What are those observations? And it will convert those observations to coordinates for you. But the key thing with keeping your observations is that it can be adjusted. We can edit the field book. And we can also do uh, uh, loop adjustments on the accuracy of the data based on uh, like a least squares math calculation on the error. To get to the survey tools, we can initiate commands right here, but a shortcut is on the home ribbon. There's an import survey data. Import survey data says, which project do you want to use, or do you want to create a new one? Um, I typically will make a new one for every field book file, and I'll combine all the field book files for a project into one big field book file. That way I can run the file and I have a complete record. Um, I would typically use the project name or the date or something like that. Uh, I'm going to just put in the struggles. Okay, so now I have, uh, let's give it a second, and we'll make a new project named Struvels. Now that I have Struvels, next, I'm going to get a field book, browse. I have this one on my desktop. Okay, this machine's desktop. Survey field book, next. Uh, network, I'm going to create a network. You can have multiple networks inside one field book. Basically, that is multiple loops that you traverse with the instrument. Um, I don't think we want to go there. I can just put an A in here, say this is loop A. We'll never have a B. Um, once I OK that, next. The check boxes you're going to want to turn on is, I love to see interactive graphics. That one's just cool. When you get good at this, you'll turn that off because you don't need to see it. But it, what you get to do is watch the instrument man go out there and set up and the rodman run around. And you get to watch him do the drawing. Process line work. Yes, that means draw those lines that we defined in the file. Um, Sign an offset, no, we don't need to do that. That would add like a thousand to everything. Insert network object. I'm not going to do that because uh, I'm not going to do any adjustment on this. But if you wanted to do that, what it would do is show you where all the setup points were and where all the sightings were taken, which kind of draws stars on your screen. It can be interesting, and we can use it for adjustments. But I'm not going there. Figures, yes, that's the drawing, drafted line work, in addition to line codes. Um, 
I can talk about the figure database later. Survey points, you definitely want this one on. We can get them later if you don't do it, but basically, do you want the points? Yes. Um, tolerance errors. In real life, you would want to see all the tolerance errors. In the classroom, we're not going to care about that, so I'm going to just hit finish. Now my little Rodman goes running all over the drawing. And in a minute, he'll be done. Okay. Ooh, I've got a drawing, the zoom extents. Drop it down to maybe 20 scale. The points are not all labeled because only the trees had labels predefined. I need to turn the labels on on the others. Um, if I want to turn all the labels on for all the points, if I window my drawing, control one for properties, I get 982 objects, but I can pull that down and just get the Togo points, which would ignore the symbols and the other things. And I can say point label style, I want elevations and descriptions, close, escape. And I've got more labels and I probably need to go down to at least a 10 or lower to see anything. Oh, this would be a good time to make a scale of five. In the scale pull down.